How many words does your child have? This is a question that is asked a lot as a special needs mom, but as a parent in general, even when your toddler is growing up, the doctor is gonna ask this. Then the school asks this, early intervention, therapist, and I have found that a lot of parents don't understand the difference between a functional and non-functional word. So when this question is asked, they're actually giving incorrect information to early intervention that could help them be able to get the help that their child needs. So we're gonna talk about the difference between functional words and what they are, what non-functional words are, and then there is this in-between where a certain type of speaking can be considered functional and non-functional. So what is a functional word? A functional word is spontaneous, consistent, and meaningful. With autism, it's really hard because sometimes a child might just say a word once, functional, and then never say it again. Penelope said move one day functional, and she has never said it again. So for her, that is not a word that we count because it's not consistent. And spontaneous means that they're saying it on their own. It's not you saying a word and them copying what you are saying. This is why a lot of us parents consider these functional words, because when our child is first starting to talk, they mimic what we say banana. They're like, Nana. And so we're like, oh my God, they just said Nana. But when you are dealing with some disorders and diagnoses like autism, it is common for them to just repeat what you were saying without attaching meaning to it. Now that isn't to say not to be excited when your child starts copying what you're saying. It's an amazing thing as some autistic children never talk. But it is important when you are reporting what they can and can't say that it is accurate. So what is a non-functional word? This could be echolalia, which echolalia Echolalia is repeating what we are saying, but not in a functional sense. So it might be them going around the, the house repeating train, 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 train. They can physically say train, but they're not tying it to an actual train. So Liam did this. This is really strange because he can't say his name now, but when he was younger, he used to be able to go around the house saying Liam all day long. He didn't understand that that was his name. He didn't attach it to himself, but he would say it. Scripting, scripting is very common. So sometimes people will hear kids script an entire movie and think that that is talking. And we'll kind of get into the the ones that overlap with functional and non-functional. If they're randomly reciting scripts for a movie, yes, that is amazing. They can physically talk, but if they're not attaching meaning to it and using it in a meaningful and functional and consistent way, then it's not functional communication. Another example of non-functional words is repeating what you say. Now this gets confused with echolalia a lot because it does cross over a whole bunch. So echolalia is usually just taking words that they hear and later saying it over and over and over and over again. That is why it's called echolalia because it kind of sounds like an echo. With Liam, we can say eats and he'll be like eats. That is not a functional word. That's a non-functional word as of right now. Of course, we hope that he's able to attach to it. Sometimes he does and then he loses it. So it's very much back and forth. They have to say it on their own consistently and with meaning behind it. I don't want to discourage any parents from modeling speech. We should be modeling speech all day long, even if your child is nonverbal, because that is how they learn is by those models. But when you're reporting how many words and understanding where their speech and language is at, if they're repeating what you're saying, that is not a word unless they're saying it on the own. We actually do consider eats a functional word for Liam, because yes, a lot of times we do have to model it first for him to say it, but he can say it independently, consistently, and with meaning on his own. Own. If the only time they're saying that specific word is when you're modeling it first, that's not a functional word. Not to say that it won't be. Okay, all right. So we kind of talked about what's functional, what's non-functional. Let's talk about the in-between. As I just mirrored, like sometimes they can repeat what we're saying and it be meaningful. So the biggest one is scripting. Sometimes children can script from a movie or from other language that they've heard and they're scripting, but they're using it in a functional way. I have a five-year-old sister-in-law she is adorable. And she did scripting a lot when she was first learning how to talk, but she would do it in a very, very functional way. Rosie, it's time for bed. Rosie, it's time for bed. She was scripting and it was kind of a little bit of echolalia as well. Um, what she had heard, but she was 
meaning for it as a way to communicate that she was ready for bed. Same thing with eating. So even though it was scripting or echolalia, it was functional in a sense that she was communicating her needs. Hello, bye, how are you doing? I'm fine. That is a perfect example of scripting. And as long as they're using it appropriately, Lex, our five-year-old, he would script that a lot. Um, and that is very, very normal. But we still considered those words because he was using them appropriately. And I get asked a lot like the, what the difference between scripting and echolalia is. Scripting is basically where you're taking a script and you are repeating it. Echolalia, you're usually only going to use one or two words and it's going to be something that's going to be repeated on a regular basis, usually throughout the day. A lot of times it's things and words that they automatically just say. They feel like they have to say this. I have this as well. Sometimes throughout the day, I just randomly have to say random words that make no sense. Scripting is usually something that they've heard before, typically on movies and shows. So if you're asking yourself, well, can I consider my child's words functional? If they're scripting, if they're echolalia, think to yourself, do they ever use this without prompts? And is it telling me what they need? Are they saying it when they're wanting to communicate? If the answer is yes, then yes, that is functional. And it gets really confusing and it's so hard to count words with kids on the spectrum because they gain and lose them constantly, but sometimes they will pick up scripts, right? Maybe they can say, what is going on right now? And not really have each of those words functional. So it's hard to count each of those words. That's why once your child is diagnosed on the spectrum, most people don't really count words unless they're doing it for insurance purposes. And this is what kind of prompt this video idea because I'm currently going through this with our almost three-year-old and almost four-year-old that we are having to be like, okay, how many words are they having? What is it compared to what they should have? But once they get older, you aren't counting words. You aren't going, well, my six-year-old should be saying 10,000 words, but they're only saying X, Y, Z. But when they're younger, especially when you're doing early intervention, it's important to ask yourself, are they using these words functional? The most I see this, and I've had multiple school officials, therapists tell me that this is a common mistake that parents make, is that when their child is toddler age, echolalia and scripting usually isn't a thing at this point. They're asked how many words do they say, they will include words that if they say banana and then the child says banana, they say that their child can say banana because in their eyes, their child can physically say banana, not realizing that it's not spontaneous, it's not consistent and it's not meaningful. So when they go to, to evaluate them and score them, the parents are usually confused on why their communication is so low because as we know with <laughs> kids on the spectrum, sometimes they can be really good at at imitating that can become confusing for the parent. It's also really important if you're doing like pre-screening for early intervention or therapy, because if you go telling them, yes, my child is two and she has 70 words, but only five of them are functional and you're leaving that, that, that out, that, oh, she can physically say about 50 to 70 words, but only five are functional, that is different than saying she can say 70 words because suddenly her communication score does go up. And initially, usually when there's pre-screening, it is done off of what the parent is reporting. Now, when you're going in for an autism evaluation, it's more than just that. But I feel like a lot of times we are having to wait for these evaluations and early intervention is all that a lot of our families get. So it's important to make sure that you are reporting accurately. So I hope this answered questions. I'm gonna be doing more videos like this that are kind of shorter in nature and just kind of straight to the point as much as possible. So if you have any specific videos or questions that you want me to answer, leave them below. But if you are new here, feel free to hit that little red subscribe button. My name is Stephanie. I have six children. Four of them, the four youngest, are on the spectrum. They're special needs and I'm autistic myself. So on this channel, we're gonna be talking a lot about autism special needs and advocating and doing that in the way that I feel most comfortable, which is sit downs like this or hands on the logs. So we would love for you to join our little YouTube family. We'll see you later. Where you move, make me blind. You will always be there. There's no doubt in my mind. You will always be there. Heading out to see.